Hey there, welcome back into Main Street Living. Quincy, what, what kind of shopper are you? A bargain hunter? An impulse buyer? Eh, probably more of a bargain hunter. I'm frugal. More of a bargain myself as well. But no matter what your shopping style is, you want to make sure you end up with items that are unique and not necessarily what everybody else can find at the big box stores. Yeah, well, our next guest founded and continues to run an amazingly cool community market in Providence, Rhode Island. Let's welcome to Main Street Living, Maria Taco. How you doing there, Maria? Fine, thanks. How are you guys? We are doing wonderful. Well, I can't speak for uh, uh, Danielle. I know she's. A oh, shop. I'm so excited for this segment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Maria, you followed your dream to start a local community market in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, almost a decade ago. Like, what were you hoping to create? Well, I, you know, it started out as a side hustle, and um, I had been going to the Brooklyn Flea for many years, and really wanted to cre recreate that sort of environment here in Providence. And so, you know, it's really um, a venue where commerce and community intersect. Nice, nice. Well, the Providence flea is not a typical flea market. So what is the market like today and what can shoppers find? It's not a typical flea market um, and it hasn't been, which is why we dropped the market from the name. So it's really just the Providence flea in the sort of in the vein of the Brooklyn flea, as I mentioned, and the Cleveland flea. and the Berkeley Flea. Um, so it's it's an indie maker and vintage market. So you will find lots of um, independent artists, artisans, vintage vendors, uh, small batch bake shops, um, clothing vendors, um, you know, graphic designers who are who have their own streetwear brands. Um, uh, you know, handcrafted jewelry, um, handmade apothecary items. So it's a little bit of everything. And we also um, promote local nonprofits every week as well. So it's, it's really a great mix. And I think because the vendors change every week, that's kind of what keeps people coming back to see what's new and different. Yeah, well, you, you just touched on the type of vendors that you have. Um, you know, what, what does it mean to have them in the market um, as a way to connect to shoppers or to connect with shoppers, I should say? Well, you know, they're all locals. And I think um, what has happened is um, we have lots of repeat customers. Providence is really, um, the, the state is really a city state and Providence is really the hub as the creative capital, uh, which is how it promotes itself. And so we see a lot of the same people who come back to, um, you know, frequent the market to see vendors who they recognize, who they've developed relationships with, who they follow on social media. Uh, you know, and who they want to support. So, you know, I think um, insofar as the kind of um, atmosphere that we've created, it really has become a community market in, in the best way. Mm. Okay. And obviously you're drawing a lot of shoppers. What do you think draws them to the Providence Flea? Uh, you know, I think that it's unique. I think that they are mostly local vendors, um, regional vendors. I think it's because we try really hard to recruit and find vendors that you won't see anywhere else who kind of premiere um, at the flea, they launch at the flea, they use it as um, an incubator. Um, they use it to, you know, test products, to get consumer feedback, you know, to see what works really. So I think, you know, um, the more people that find out about it or have found out about it over the years, when they come here, they realize that it's not a typical flea market they realize that it's local. They realize that it's all small batch and independent makers. There's nothing mass produced. There's nothing corporate. There are no home show vendors. It, you know, it really is. Um, it really is a community market where, uh, you know, you're you're going to find people that you know and want to support. Yeah. So you guys also have live music. Tell us about that atmosphere. Yeah, so well, pre-COVID, we had live musicians outdoors on the boardwalk uh, downtown in Providence. Um, the outdoor market is really how it started, and um, it's an every Sunday market. And we also attracted local musicians who wanted to come and play. So we, we set them up on the boardwalk. It's all acoustic, so it's not, um, you know, super loud or, you know, really plugged in. And, you know, they also get to play for tips, and some of them have merchandise. And it just kind of adds to the, you know, to that really sort of cool Sunday vibe. It's really just, it's become sort of like the after brunch place to go um, in the summer, I think. 
Yeah, it's like what what Sunday should be about is a vibe because that's the last day before the beginning of the real work week. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah, togetherness. Yeah. Uh, well, we have to talk about too how you got here. You were very successful. You had a great stable job, and then you decided to become an entrepreneur with the Providence Flea Venture. Your vendors are also entrepreneurs and small business owners. How much impact? do these small businesses have on your local economy? And what does that kind of mean to you to be able to support that? Well, you know, I really connect with the vendors in the market because I started my own sort of side hustle that I really wanted to grow into a full-time gig. And it has become um, within the past four or five years, uh, you know, a permanent thing for me. But, you know, we, we've we um, hosted over 2000 vendors, uh, unique vendors over the years since we started counting um, in 2016. Uh, so there's probably been many, even many more. And I think the, the impact to the community is significant. Um, you know, buy local is a big thing everywhere. And I think especially in Rhode Island, because we're so small and because our industry is tourism, um, it's, it's probably our main industry. We do bring in a lot of tourists and, and I think they really like to see those small local vendors. And I think that, you know, the more money that, um, the more money that that you know people spend on these local businesses is money down the line that stays in the community, um, as those small vendors buy other things. You know, it's not going to the headquarters of a big box store somewhere out of state. So I, I do think the impact to the community and to the local economy has been significant. We haven't been able to measure it, but with several thousand people coming to visit the market every weekend, we know that it has to have an impact. Yeah, and, and with that said, you mentioned tourism is the market open year round. It is now. We started as just a summer seasonal market. And, um, you know, within a few years, we became a year round market. Today, we are indoors at the new state of the art Farm Fresh RI Market Hall, which is a um, dedicated market hall for their uh, farmers market on Saturdays. And we program it with our flea on Sundays from September through May. And then we go outdoors uh, because in you know New England, we have a very short outdoor season. So we're outside from uh, June through September. Nice. Where can viewers get more info about the market? Certainly they can visit our website at ProvidenceFlea.com or send us a, an email at info at ProvidenceFlea.com and follow us on social at ProvidenceFlea. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Marie, from one entrepreneur to another. I salute you. <laughs> thank you guys. Appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Well, Danielle, up next, we stay right here in Rhode Island where it's all about their signature cuisines. Don't miss it. Mm -hmm.